Welcome one and all as we close out the week here at the Damage Report. I am John Arola, that is Brett Ehrlich, host of the Happy Half Hour. Brett, how in the hell are you doing? Uh, it's laundry, I don't have clean shirts under this sweatshirt. So it's just skin and kind of scratchy cotton, boys. You, you literally went to the last day of your clothing. <laughs> you are an adult, sir. I have shirts, Planet but they're hair. like, I couldn't put them under this and this just was there and I had a lot yeah. going on. It would be like a bright blue ring around the collar, which is probably cool. Cause yesterday I looked at, I got this ad from Amazon that's like dress like an influencer. And it looked like one of those old Buzzfeed articles where they're like, can you believe this was a fashion ad from 1976? <laughs> I don't oh. even know. Like dress like an influencer could mean such different things. Like a yeah, fashion influencer? Sh- I don't uh, like, I, like it, one of the polls. I I believe it or not, John, I didn't click through. Yeah. So I anyway, am an unconverted um, impression, as they call we'll it. We'll never know how fashionable you could have been. <laughs> um Brett, someday I want you to show up on the show wearing like full suit and tie. I don't know the last time that I, I saw that, that on you. I think I did Maybe. it. Maybe. It was like either your birthday or the anniversary of the show where I wore a tux. Okay, that's going too far. You don't need to do that. But yeah, let's uh, let's get weird with it. You know, as the country falls apart. Uh, with that said, thank you everyone for being here. Very much appreciate your continued uh, attention to the state of the country. We're going to be jumping through a lot of different topics today on the show. Starting off with a couple of the more I don't know, just really difficult aspects of the now confirmed destruction of the Titan submersible. It's not a story that we've talked about a lot on the show, but there's just a couple details that sometimes I feel like I have to discuss something just to resolve it in my mind. And so we're gonna be doing that. Uh, Donald Trump, you might know, was impeached twice, but what if he wasn't impeached twice? What if we could make that happen? There are some people who have a plan to do just that. We'll be talking about Hitler quotes and death threats against meteorologists and just lots of fun stuff, you know. Um, uh, Ted Cruz, maybe not a senator for much longer. We'll be having a little debate about that. And uh, did Pixar's Elemental go woke? And is that why it went broke? All that in the first hour of the show. But definitely stick around for the aftermath, by the way. Congressman Ro Khanna is gonna be joining us. And we will, of course, be throwing away our garbage people of the week. So lots to look forward to on the program in advance of all that. Please hit the like button and share the stream if you haven't already. And you can reach out to us and we'll respond as we go. But um, with all that said, Brett, are you ready to start the show? Let's do it, John. Okay, in fact, let's do it. The tragic story of the Titan submersible ended yesterday as many people feared that it would with Ocean Gate Expeditions, the company behind it announcing that the sub had been lost, all five of those on it believed to have been lost. And while there's still a lot of details that we don't necessarily know about exactly what happened, there is now good cause to believe that the sub suffered a catastrophic implosion before it had even reached the surface, the the. I guess the depths of the ocean as it was going down, it apparently was lost. Uh, Navy readings from several days ago apparently picked up what now is believed to have been that implosion. Um, And so look, not a lot of this is honestly that surprising for people who have been following the story. The expectation was that it had been lost and it indeed was, which is obviously uh, a tragedy. Uh, It's not the only sea based tragedy of the last week or so, just a reminder, but There was a couple of aspects of the story that I wanted to focus on. And one that I think I really do understand why this is the thing that has really stuck out following the announcement has to do with one of the passengers. And that is the 19 year old passenger that had been on it, Suleiman Dawood. So you're seeing there a shot of him with his father, both of whom had been lost on it. And the older sister of the businessman that Asme Dawood said, that Suleiman informed a relative before the trip that he quote, wasn't very up for it and felt terrified about the trip to explore the wreckage of the Titanic. But, and this is just like on a personal level, not a policy level, not a global level, but on a personal level, just such a devastating thing to consider. Agreed to go on it because the trip fell over Father's Day weekend and he was eager to please his dad who was a big Titanic buff and really excited about the trip. Sister said, I feel disbelief now, it's an unreal situation. And look, all five were lost, 
in a very real sense, the conditions that led to them being lost are not that important. It's the fact that they were lost. But knowing that like your fear was justified and then doing it not because you yourself wanted to, but because your father was excited about it. That is just such a devastating thing, Brett. I don't know. We had a little bit of a disagreement about this in our production meeting, but but what do you make of this? I mean, that's always how it is if you're scared of something. If you're scared of something and nothing happens during that event, then you were scared for no reason. And if something happens during that event, you were scared for a reason. The question is how rational are you with your fear? Um, and that is kind of the approach that I took one time, like after I was on a plane, like a 747 where an engine blew up. I was mm-hmm. like, of course, this is gonna happen and it's gonna happen every time. And it blew up while you were on the flight? Yeah, I watched it. It wow. was scary. <laughs> just looking okay. out there and it went, because you can kind of hear it. There was just like a flame and then no flame and then smoke and then nothing. And then the plane just kind of doing this. It was a troubled plane before we took off, but there were FAA regulations. And then you find someone, I sat next to a guy from Boeing who's like, yeah, you could just have one engine. As long as the wing doesn't come off, you're fine. Um, But that's it. That said, going to the visit the wreckage of the Titanic in the submersible vessel created by a guy who was proud of how he flouted safety regulations right and left, that your fear then becomes more and more founded. And the question is, how do do you want to respond to something like this? This is all about psychology. This is all about how an individual handles these kinds of things. Do you use your intellect to get past it? Or do you just sit there and have a moment where you understand, yes, this is wildly sad. No human being in their right mind would get, yeah. would would you know be upset with this kid for feeling that way would be upset with the father for wanting to do something fun with his kid uh, on Father's Day and then the question that you have to then tackle you get back to the intellectual like did they have any opportunity in a world where James Cameron has explored the Titanic wreckage 30 times do they have an opportunity yeah. to realistically understand just how sketchy this undertaking was or did they think yeah it's like uh you know it's like going on a SpaceX thing it's high profile enough it should be fine Yeah, and look, you expect when you are rich and when you spend a lot of money on stuff, you expect that you'll be protected because you always are. And unfortunately, in this case, you are not. And look, I I assume I am not yet a father, but I assume that part of being a father is, or a parent, I should say, is encouraging your kids to do things that they're afraid of because kids can be afraid of things that they shouldn't necessarily be. And if you simply bow to your fear on everything, then you won't experience a lot. But knowing where to draw that line, and knowing who to trust, oh, it just it kills. You know, I um very briefly before we move on, I, I did my trip to the Arctic or whatever, and I did you know I was on a boat for a couple of weeks or whatever to the North Pole. But I I don't know if I've ever really talked about this. The boat that I went on was not the boat that I was supposed to go on. We originally scheduled the trip to be on a sailing vessel with a totally different person, a totally different group. And uh, I, I'm not gonna be specific, but I did a training. I did training, international training with this person. And when I came back, I said, uh, yeah, I don't know about this. I don't think that I wanna do this. And we went with a totally different thing that was way more professional. And uh, I don't know what would have happened if I, I don't, I think the trip fell apart because we pulled out, but it was definitely gonna be more risky. <laughs> so, but that said, I still, when I was afraid of other things, I still did it. I was terrified of camping in polar bear country and that, Did not go wrong, I was not eaten, but if I had been eaten, then maybe a story like this would have come out. The evidence of the eater was very close to where you slept. Yeah, as I always tell people, uh, so we pull up our little boat onto the shore and then we camp 20 feet from the shore. And between the shore and the camp was polar bear tracks. And really close to the water, so you imagine the tracks haven't been there that long. But anyway, uh, with that said, it is a tragedy. Um, But for some, it's not enough of a tragedy. Something's missing. Are you surprised to find out that some are pushing for conspiracy theories to be sprinkled onto the tragic story of the Titan submersible being lost? And uh, it's not just the usual suspects. 
Donald Trump Jr. tweeting, literally everything I've seen about this missing submarine is insane and sketchy AF. Almost none of it makes any sense whatsoever. How long till we find other external factors making it even more so? The cool thing about saying something like that is if no external factors are ever found, there will be no consequences to you whatsoever. You can just say crazy things with no evidence whatsoever and there will be no punishment whatsoever. None of it makes any sense whatsoever. What exactly are you talking about, you moron? It was a like largely unregulated submersible that lots of people thought was likely to fail that failed. That sucks, that's tragic. I don't like living in a chaotic world where things like this can happen, but it makes sense. And it's not just on Junior. Before you jump in, uh, this individual who's like a crypto person on Twitter with 600,000 followers says, the submarine thing is suspicious. It seems very far fetched that a bunch of billionaires would take such a risky trip to check out the Titanic ruins. I mean, surely they have more pressing things to do as billionaires. And now they've disappeared, sounds like an escape plan. And that was one of many tweets asserting not just the possibility that something else is going on, but the certainty that something else is going on, that they weren't actually on that. They were escaping for taxes or pedophilia or whatever, or they were on it and they were being killed by the government and it wasn't an accident. Just like I understand that there's a lot of suspicion about things that go on in the world. It's a chaotic world, there are people with a lot of power and money. Not everything has a conspiracy behind it. Is what I would say. And why have we become so accepting of making massive, confident claims with zero evidence whatsoever, Brett? Um, There's this Yiddish word, it might be Hebrew, I don't know, called Dayenu. It would have been enough. It would have been enough, but it got better. Um, I want people to kind of take a version of that that, like, is it, it is enough. I know it's really cool to think that everything's a conspiracy theory. But this isn't, you know, if you want to satiate that part of you that really needs this salacious, crazy story, this is the story of a submersible that a guy said, oh, I'm breaking all the rules on how to make it. They say you shouldn't make it of this or it'll implode. And it imploded. That if you're if you're just devoid of the humanity it takes to understand the tragedy of the loss of human life and all the nuances thereof, and and then then just relish the fact that this was a perfect story for you. Be like, mm, they think they know everything, and it's so weird to me what they choose to allow to be enough and where mm-hmm. they settle in their like billionaires are crazy story, and they're all part of the deep state. Like they just. If it's easy, if it's the most obvious conclusion, well, that's boring to them. And so people like they need to come up with more. And it's like maybe your life's just boring. But with Donald Trump Jr., I think the reason nothing makes sense to him is not because the facts aren't there. It's because he's too stupid to comprehend them. I think you might be on to something. (laughs) Um, But also uh, outside of the individuals, so I can't, I don't know the minds of either of these two people or the many other people saying stuff like it. I'm sure there's videos on TikTok getting millions of views asserting that it's something to do with Wookiees or something (laughs) insane. But also it's, it's convenient to train people to believe that there's a conspiracy behind everything. You cannot allow a story like this to simply move on without injecting conspiracy because you are seeding the ground for future conspiracies. You want people to believe insane things and to not trust anyone in a position of expertise or authority. And then that will pay dividends later on when say a pandemic hits or the former president is charged with a crime. Well, if you believe that these billionaires were disappeared or whatever, then maybe you believe that Trump is being set up. Right, they talk about the woke mind virus, but this kind of behavior is a mind virus. The difference before Mm -hmm. social media is everybody was quarantined. Like, did you ever go talk to like a random person or someone in your family at Thanksgiving? For for millennia, if you talk to them, they'll be like, yo, the water's turning the frogs gay. They just didn't have the chance to like all glom together into this mass that now has become a critical mass that has done to Twitter what happened to Dig, what happened to Reddit for a while, where it all just turned into weirdos that are now 
the you know at least before there was like television to be boring and and appeal to the least common denominator as like cross reference through sponsors it never really got to the crazy thing but now yeah. that is the front facing influencer is social media where where enough weirdos who are like listen they're just disappearing billionaires except the ones that I've arbitrarily decided to like Exactly, exactly, madness. Okay, well, with that, we're gonna move on to uh, our next topic. <clears throat> A lot going on today. You're probably well aware that Donald Trump holds a historic distinction that he is the only president to have been impeached twice, at least as of now. From the rights point of view, it sucks that Trump was impeached. They don't like that at all. And so they'd like to rewind the clock, which apparently, according to them, is a thing that you can do. And you can unimpeach Donald Trump. So that's what they're pushing for. Representatives Marjorie Taylor Greene, oh, really? I didn't expect that she'd be a part of this. And Elise Stefanik, both just yesterday unveiled measures to expunge. Trump's record for the two impeachments, arguing that the claims against him were partisan and political and not based in fact, and so they should not still be there. I will remind you, by the way, because each one is focusing on a different thing. Marjorie Greens focuses on his first impeachment, the original. The sequel was pretty good too, watch both. But but 2019, remember, was over Donald Trump's efforts, sort of symbolically signified by the call, but it wasn't the only thing that it was about. The call to President Vladimir Zelensky, who at that point he was not trying to destroy the reputation of, to do an investigation of Joe Biden. A sham investigation based in nothing that would be conveniently timed to happen during the election to hurt Joe Biden's chances and potentially throw the election to Trump. That's what he did. Here is Marjorie Greene is defending trying to expunge that particular impeachment. The Democrats led by Pelosi and Schiff weaponized a perfect phone call. Oh, Who is she quoting when she says that? Uh, with Ukraine to interfere with the 2020 election. Meanwhile, the FBI had credible, credible evidence on Biden and Hunter Biden's corrupt dealings, blah, blah, blah. The five million thing that they can't prove. I would love to see it, just show me the evidence and we'll get Biden out of there. But you're not doing that, okay? And so the fact that on that call, Trump says to Zelensky, I would like I would like you to do us a favor and very clearly makes future military aid contingent on doing a sham investigation. It's the most obvious thing in the world. He was rightly impeached for it and now they're trying to wipe that out. That's only one of the two, but Brent, what do you think about this effort? Let's do, it. no, let's not stop there. Let's do a time machine so we can go back in time and undo a lot of stuff. Like this is, this is the the most annoying and boring part of politics. It's driving me mad mm-hmm. uh, that they want to go and on it. All the stuff that they're criticizing the other side for theoretically doing, they're going and doing. They're futzing with the impeachment process over something that is insanity. Um, there is no such thing as a perfect phone call. Anyone who's been on a phone call is like, ooh, why did I like say uh, love you when I was talking to the person to say goodbye? Like it was just a well, reflex. Technically, Brett, the perfect phone call is a text, actually. I think there you that's go. Been yeah. Definitively Those are never misinterpreted. Um, but yeah, it's it's just so dumb. And like, sure, there's it just proves how much time they have on their hands and insanity. The fact this slightly fascinating thing for me is that like Elise Stefanik through all of this, who used to be like a kind of boring, normal Republican, and is like, no, I'm tired of waiting for the pendulum to swing back to like boring corporate Republicanism. I'm going to put on this insane affect to be just like Marjorie Taylor Greene and pretend to be this kind of Republican. Yeah. Um, that's one thing is like with people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, you have to understand the deep state that you're so afraid of. The definition of that is someone who's working from within to kind of unseat the people that you think should be in power. And the answer is that is Elise Stefanik at the very first scenario that's possible. She is a mole for corporate establishment Republicanism and Ron DeSantis, who is actively trying to get rid of your Lord and Savior, Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah, turn against them. I mean, look, it's literally entrenched power. 
taking away after the fact the consequences of another elite's criminal acts. Like it's not secret, but it seems like the deep state other than that. I anyway, just want a great uh, reset. And I don't mean that one. I'm talking about just like, all right, the last eight years were so stupid. The last 10, 12 years have been so dumb. Mm-hmm. Can we just go back? Just say, everyone, go just stop it. And yeah. stop like yelling at each other for impeachments. Stop trying to undo impeachment. Stop censoring Adam Schiff. Stop going after Hunter Biden and and Joe Biden for stuff that you're mad that Trump did. The essential like stuff that was way worse because it's in conflict with American policy at the time, as sanctioned by the actual freaking Congress. Yeah, you weirdos. Yeah, a bunch of weirdos. Uh, honestly, it's not that different from how Republicans address a lot of things that are inconvenient to them. Um, when you try to ban the teaching of history, are you not kind of expunging the record? Expunging the Confederacy's record and slaveholders' records and homophobes' records and all of that. That is effectively what you're doing. Um, we're gonna close with this and we have to move on in just a sec. But I'll remind you, the second impeachment was over the attempt to overthrow the US government following the 2020 election. And there's a million things that we could play as a reminder of just how significant it was and how demanding there how demanding consequences were at that point. Here is a video that was played during the uh, sort of the investigation in January 6th. Let's play this. And and just to to be clear, so um, he was told again in that conversation, or was he told again in that conversation that people couldn't come through the mags because they had weapons? Correct. And um, that people, and he, his response was to say they can march to the Capitol from in, from the ellipse. Something to the effect of take the effing mags away, they're not here to hurt me. Let them in, let my people in. They can march to the Capitol after the rally's over. They can march from, they can march from the ellipse, take the effing mags away. Take the effing mags away. It might not be immediately clear what mags mean. Some people might think that it means like the magazine in a gun, the guns that he's talking about. No, that's not actually what it means. Mag is short for mag- magnetometer. They're devices used to detect the presence of metal objects. So if you have a gun, if you have a knife, the mags detect it and the cops can stop you from entering the Capitol grounds. He said specifically, they're not here to hurt me. Take the effing mags away. He wanted more guns and more knives to get into the building. They're expunging the record of that guy. Quick final thoughts, Brett. It's okay to say that Donald Trump sucks, guys. He does. It was weird. It was dumb. All the things he said were lies. Just move on. Find someone else. Find something else to be about. This is so stupid. All the things that if you if you wrote down on paper qualities of Donald Trump. Most of them would be the exact same as the qualities you hate in everybody else. You're just making an exception because you like the guy, which is fine if you're picking someone to watch on Thursday nights for firing, you know, someone from <laughs> The Apprentice. But it's not okay when it comes to like choosing a president. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Take the effing mags away. There's something there with MAGA. Anyway, we'll think yeah. about it. We'll be back with more news after this. Okay, everybody, let's jump back in the news. Oh, By the way, if you are just joining us, please hit the like button if that's a thing that's on the platform you're on. Those of you in the podcast though, you can't see me, but I'm giving you a double thumbs up. No, No, he's not, it's the middle fingers, two middle fingers. No, it wasn't, I swear. No, there's no way way of disproving this. It's a middle fingers. John, put your shirt back uh, on. John, put my pants back on. Oh my God, this is that scene from The Office. Okay, we're gonna jump into the news to stop whatever this has become. Moms for Liberty is an organization that's been in the news quite a bit over the last year or two. And from the point of view of a rational person, rarely for anything good. But even more rarely for anything as bad as this. A local Indiana chapter of the group quoted Adolf Hitler in a newsletter and they've had to kind of apologize for it. Even that isn't enough for an unequivocal apology, but let's get to what they actually did. Here is the newsletter that they sent out. And you can see on the right hand side, he alone who owns the youth gains the future, Adolf Hitler. Right above, as was pointed out by producer Mike, Moms for Liberty will not be intimidated by hate groups. Which actually has rarely been as true because they clearly are not intimidated by hate groups, they're inspired by them. 
Uh, it's an aspirational thing. Look at these great quotes from the Fuhrer. So anyway, uh, they are obviously, if you're not familiar, they're a far right organization that engages in anti student inclusion activities. They say they're part of the modern parental rights movement. If rights is supposed to be defined as your right to have other people's kids not learn pretty much anything in school, they are in favor of that right. Uh, they are fine with COVID-19 running wild through schools. They don't believe that LGBTQ people should be able to live open free lives. And they have never met a book that they don't wanna ban, except maybe Mein Kampf. I will leave open the, the possibility that they'd be okay with that one. But anyway, uh, they say that in response to the uproar, that they're gonna add original, they're gonna add context to the original newsletter to say that the quote from this quote horrific leader should put parents on alert. But that's but that's not what you did in the newsletter. You just quoted it like you would MLK Jr. Like you just put it in there as like it's any other historic figure. They do say this is the chapter leader of that particular chapter says, we condemn Adolf Hitler's actions at his dark place in human history. We should not have quoted him in our newsletter and express our deepest apology. So at that point, that's that's good. I think that's a pretty good apology. From my point of view, Brett, what do you think? No, they made a huge mistake. They learned nothing from the people that inspired them to do the things they do on a regular basis. You gotta double down. You gotta, mm -hmm. you gotta post a photo. If you apologize, that's weakness. You need to post a photo of you with, if not a Hitler impersonator, then some Nazi paraphernalia, maybe some thumbs up, maybe get a tattoo of a swastika. That's how you have to act this day and age. Those people not familiar with Moms of Liberty, they are my favorite. They are the moms who wanna book ban every book. And so what they do is they go to school board meetings pretending to be the sane ones. And all they do is read like the most salacious smutty paragraphs from otherwise uh, total award winning books that inspire the kind of free thought they pretend is illegal. Yeah. Um, and so it's just moms being like, this is traumatizing my kid, which you got going on here. So I'm gonna read it, pin her down, smack her on the ass. You're just like, holy shnikes, lady. <laughs> I feel the more traumatizing thing is you going in front of your kids, friends, parents, and the entire internet and talking about smacking people on the ass, you weirdo. Yeah, I, I think that reading erotica in public is a kink that hasn't gotten enough of a venue in the past. And I think that these PTA meetings have really freed people up to live their best lives. Yeah, I'm. I, it's just anyway. the moms are so bored. I, I, I'm founding a, like a new organization called Moms for Something Else to Do. <laughs> moms for like extracurricular activities that don't involve doing this. They're just so bored. And the one mom that I'm actually referencing, I made a video on this Rebel HQ about Moms for Liberty. And that mom then just goes on a diatribe about how she doesn't wanna have anal sex and how she's never had anal sex. And you just watch her kid be like, we need to move to a new school district. I need something we else. have to start over. Please I need just, a mask and a new just name. hit me with something blunt so yeah. I forget all of this. We like need for government subsidies for hobbies for moms. <laughs> also, by the way, dads, because dads have a lot of time to throw like uh, aviator glasses on, take a photo of them in their car, and then just bother people on Twitter. That's also a pretty bad use of your time. But anyway, uh, regardless of their quotes or their erotica, Moms for Liberty is present in 44 states, 285 chapters. And while I don't necessarily agree with the way that they spend their time, with um, what their priorities are. There's really not much else for them to do because there are no problems in our schools and uh, kids don't need any additional help. So they're just stuck with this, this is all there is. Anyway, with that said, why don't we move on to other news. Imagine getting death threats for just reporting on the weather. Well, that's the reality that we live in in America in 2023. Chris Gloninger is a meteorologist. Or at least was, not sure if he still will be going forward because he just left KCCI and his career in TV news because of family health issues, post traumatic stress that he suffered after receiving death threats over his coverage of the weather, specifically because he doesn't deny the existence and reality of climate change. Here are some of the threats that he shared. 
Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, science like Fauci, you dumb blank, go east and drown from the ice cap melting. Why exactly you'd be more likely to drown from the ice cap melting on the east, I don't know. Maybe he lives on the east coast and that, that's where the ocean is, I suppose. But anyway, I love this. This person is enraged by you accepting that climate change is happening. But his death threat also hinges on the ice caps melting. So mixed signals there. Anyway, another one says, what's your home address? We conservative Iowans would like to give you an Iowan welcome you will never forget. Kind of like the rest is redacted, but I'm assuming it was a violent threat. Getting sick and tired of your liberal conspiracy theory on the weather. Climate changes every day, always has, always will. You're pushing nothing but a Biden hoax. Go back to what where you came from. Where did he? Where did he come from? I mean, he's not from Iowa originally, but is that a thing that we use inside of the United States now? I thought normally you're at least telling people to go back to a different country. You just mean go back to like Kentucky or something? Anyway, there's others, but he received so many of these threats that he became terrified of what might happen to him and his family if he continued to just report what was going on in the weather and with the climate, Brett. That's fun. Listen. I just can't imagine. Like I understand being frustrated with a weatherman because he like got the weather wrong and you had a picnic and the wind was stronger than he said. Um, but to the point where you're like spending your time issuing death threats to the weatherman over that, it's a, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it's a little overboard. Um, and if you're mad at him, to the extent that you can't believe that this weatherman understands climate change. You're mad at someone who dedicated their entire, a meteorologist dedicated their entire life to the understanding of weather and storms and the and climate. That is, that is what they spent time doing. You spend time just randomly cruising your <laughs> 8chan conspiracy theory websites or, or rumble or whatever. And you're an expert on that, but not an expert on the facts. And if you think they're gonna find a weatherman who doesn't believe that stuff, they're gonna have to find the like 0.3% of, of folks who study climate and come yeah. away with the conclusion that you do. And they're gonna be paid by something else. But that's that's where everything's going anyway. That's the sad thing that we have to push back against is everybody's just gonna find their own weatherman who's gonna tell them not what the weather is, but what they want the weather to be because otherwise they'll receive a death threat. Yeah, 100%. It's so like somebody being a meteorologist doesn't mean that they know everything about weather or climate, which by the way, if any conservatives are watching are different things. Um, but if you are not a meteorologist, if you did not study this, like a little bit of humility is not necessarily the worst thing. I, I, don't, I don't feel like I should need to make the case that more men should consider humility to be a strong masculine trait. Um, I feel like that's a thing that we used to accept because humility requires understanding. Understanding of you, your strengths, your limitations, and understanding of the world that you live in and your place in it. A soldier hiding behind a barricade doesn't just stand up and like look around as a sign of strength. They have the humility, they have the court vision to understand that that might be unwise. And in the same way, having an understanding of the limitations of your knowledge, not a bad idea. By the way, if you are so interested in this that you are emailing a weatherman, which is I cannot imagine ever doing that for any reason. Why don't you take some courses in this? Why don't you learn about the climate? Might not be a bad idea. Also, Fauci has nothing to do with climate change. That's a different conspiracy theory. Keep your conspiracy theories in order, please. And it's not a Biden hoax. Biden didn't make up climate change. Biden has only been president for two years. So how are you pinning the blame on him? There are so many things you could blame Biden for. But us believing in climate change, seriously? So that's your AOC conspiracy theory. You're getting your characters mixed up. But what's Final the thoughts? alternative? Like, how? What do we come up with that satisfies what? these wackos? In in that, that mean, scratches that itch that they have that gets them to be re, that gets them to accidentally coincidentally be reasonable, act reasonably. Be reasonable. Oh, I thought you were act saying similarly what, to what reasonable cons, people. What do we have that like scratches their itch for? conspiracies and these things happening behind the scenes. You mean something different? 
No, I mean that and just in the only like next step I took it to was that you know, they get to scratch that itch, but coincidentally they end up advocating for things that sensible people also advocate for. Sure. I we don't redirect it. I don't know. I mean, look, I just I wish the the simpler form is like you have all these suspicions of the elites. They are actually massively benefiting from the way things are. They have actually bought politicians and passed laws to benefit them. How is that not interesting enough for you? I get that it's real and you're not used to focusing on stuff that's real. But I I think that's interesting. Yeah. By the way, um, Brooke Mark says Greta Thunberg is too hard to spell. That's why they just went with Biden. Yeah, anyway, look. Um, it should not be an act of courage to be a meteorologist. God, we've reached dark times as a country. Anyway, um, okay, uh, we don't know, by the way, where Gloninger is going, has some sort of new position, probably doesn't want to publicize it, so people won't follow him to that one. But anyway, uh, the, the police identified one of the guys who's sending us, who's a 63 year old man with literally nothing better to do. Can't you just really get into like World War II or something? Isn't that what like you're supposed to do when you reach 63 is be obsessed with the Battle of the Bulge or something? Anyway, he was focused on this uh, meteorologist and I understand why you would still be worried. The guy was fined, but that was it. He's still out there, could still do something. Anyway, with that said, we're gonna take our first or second break of the hour. But when we come back, Ted Cruz receiving a strong challenge. We're gonna be talking about it a lot over the next year and we'll start after this. Okay, let's uh, let's jump into some other news starting with this. You should be deeply concerned about the damage being done to the integrity of the institutions in which you operate. Politicization and weaponization, this is profoundly damaging to the rule of law in our nation. This is why you are damaging the institution. Unlimited hubris, you believe you are unaccountable. You don't believe you're accountable to the American people. It's a pretty strong ad and I wanna be very clear, that's real. It's not AI generated, that's his real audio, his real video, his real beard. We checked all of it, it's hard to believe, but it's true. Uh, it was produced by the Lose Cruz Pack, which is aiming to take on Cruz as he tries to get reelected to his seat in the Senate. They put out uh, this ad uh, just in the last day with this accompanying it saying that Ted Cruz has turned his back on Texas and betrayed the company. Lose Cruz is a campaign led by Texans who are laser focused on one goal, defeating Ted Cruz. By the way, friend of the show, Olivia Giuliana is involved with the organization. We're gonna hopefully be talking to her about it. We'll have the response from the Cruz campaign in just a sec. But look, there are a lot of people that we would love to see lose their positions. A lot of people who deserve to lose their positions. I feel like Ted Cruz is S tier when it comes to that. That guy should be nowhere within 100 miles of elected office. Um, and so I would just, I would love for him to get taken out. We're gonna show you some of the polling, but what do you think, Brett? Did you just bleep screwed? He's Did est here? What? He's what est tier. About. Did you say est or f tier? Oh, s tier. On a tier list of those who should lose their office, he is s tier, which is the highest tier. Oh, I didn't even know that. Okay, I'm a I got gamer, you. what do you want out of me? Good for you, sorry everyone. <laughs> oh, I get it, I get it now. Okay, I didn't understand that, but I'm glad we all clarified it for people who are just- The Twitch people get it. Physical athletes like you. Yeah, um, this is great. I love stuff like this. I love messaging campaigns that are like, yo, your boy just took, you know, they, they want Trump Cruz out of there. And then they go and do basically anything that will just kick up dust. Um, and it's like, yo, he was bad, dude. Ted Cruz, he betrayed Trump. He, and then you go to someone else on the other side of your my your eye in in her mouth, and you go like, uh, you know, he's uh he's against decent human beings in in legitimate ways. Um, he aided and abetted Trump. I I love all the messaging in this. I love like the the bad TV filter that people put up. Um, it's mm -hmm. so funny. It's it's one of those things that you just do and see what happens. My big question with this is um, is like to what extent do people 
actually get exposed to this kind of messaging anymore. No, it I know. used to be you would run these ads on uh, like Jeopardy and they still do that. But I, I don't know how many people are actually watching that kind of stuff. And the legacy media voter is fascinating to me because they're either entrenched because they're old or they're like, I haven't really been paying attention to anything political because I've just been watching Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy in 60 minutes. And then they just come up for air and then they get this onslaught of ad messaging that um, is directed at them. I don't know if it works, but typically the prevailing sentiment is when you go negative like this, you polarize and shrink the electorate. It doesn't have the effect of getting in moderate people so mad that they get to the polls. Typically it has them going like, oh, it's so dirty, I'm gonna stay home. So you're left with that like, you know, that that saucy reduction of the most polarized vo- uh, voters in America who just are like, mm-hmm. you know, I, I was gonna vote this way anyway. And now there's not any moderates out there voting to, to kind of catalyze me. I don't. I know that that is that's that has been shown. I don't know in the modern era when it's a figure like Ted Cruz that people are so familiar with. I don't know if that effect would be as strong. I also think that an organization like this right now is probably focused on raising money to run a bunch of ads. I think that this is the sort of thing that you can do to remind people that the race is happening, remind people that Ted Cruz is going to be up to potentially lose, raise a bunch of money to then run. Uh, TV ads probably when the actual election comes, that would be my expectation. Um, and I do think that it, this sort of thing will probably get Democrats fired up. I think that there's there's a place for that. With any of these social media ads, I, I don't know how likely they are to be seen by people on the opposite side, particularly with Twitter now being what it is, where it's expressly set up to benefit the right. I, I don't think unless they're verified, I don't think that a lot of uh, uh, Republicans are gonna be seeing it anyway. Uh, that said though, I do wanna update you on the current state of the polling. We don't have a lot because we're so far out from it. But as of right now, Ted Cruz is leading, um, was considered to be the the main Democratic opponent, at least as of right now, there's still a lot of time. Colin Alred, 42 to 37, uh, 7% of the vote going to other candidates, 14% of the vote uh, saying that they don't know. And thus implying that there's in theory, a lot of room for them to break, maybe evenly, maybe not. I don't know. We've we've seen Ted Cruz multiple times get. It seemed like it was possible he was going to lose, and he still squeaked it out. But it would be absolutely massive to flip a Texas Senate seat, and it it really does feel like at some point it might happen. They keep like they keep encouraging people from states like California to move to Texas. There is a price to eventually potentially be paid. For that, and I would love for it to be sort of announced to the political world by Ted Cruz losing narrowly in his Senate race. Any other thoughts? I want Ted Cruz to to lose widely in a in a Senate race, and anything that helps that become a reality would be so delicious, especially in a state like Texas, especially in a narrative where it's like people are fleeing California in droves to move to Texas, and if that ends up biting them in the ass. God bless, God bless them so much. If it's a mix of people being like, I'm not getting out there because I don't want to vote for Trump. And I don't want to be part of any of this. If it's the disillusioned centrist Republican who's like, he's not helping the case. You can also go and convince the same people that you just start playing ads where Ted Cruz is against Trump. And if you can target those and say that, you know, when Ted Cruz was like, these are terrorists out there, and you just went about January 6th and you hammer that home to people who are susceptible to turning against Cruz on that. And then yeah. the parts where he's siding with Trump, that's, that's what you do, and you do it hard. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Hopefully they'll try out multiple strategies. You need a good candidate. And I don't know if they got one. We'll see. We'll 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 look at him. Maybe we'll be able to have him on the show. Um, maybe we can schedule him and he can pull out of the interview. <laughs> anyway, uh, no, the person we were gonna have is a great person, which is why I'm not pointing out who they are. I'm sure they're busy. Uh, anyway, with that said, why don't we move on to the last story of our first hour? Pixar's big new release, Elemental, not doing as well at the box office as was expected. And in a sane time, that would just be entertainment news, that would be pop culture news. But now, 
Everything that happens has to be a political statement in one way or another. And so did you know that it failed because it was woke? I know many of you are thinking, wait, that's the movie about fire and water and all that, right? What's woke about that? I don't know, we're gonna try to figure it out. But conservatives are claiming victory over Elemental. By the way, it had a budget of $200 million. It took in about $30 million in its opening weekend. It came in second place to The Flash, which made 55 million. So The Flash underperformed and you came in second to The Flash. So that's not ideal necessarily, but they're already, as I said, declaring victory. Clay Travis, who is a right winger with some kind of show and definitely aviators in his profile picture, said the new Disney Pixar animated movie totally bombed at the box office, making just 29.5 million, the lowest Disney Pixar release of all time. The Disney brand is a disaster. Picking woke battles with Florida Governor DeSantis is destroying their brand. Go woke, go broke. Yes, that is definitely the case. Disney has, after all, been picking many of these fights. It's Disney's thing. They're into it and they're the ones doing it. Anyway, all Disney had to do was make animated movies without political agendas for families to enjoy. Look at freaking Super Mario Brothers. It just made a billion dollars this summer as an animated movie with zero politics. Yet Bob Iger would rather feud with DeSantis and destroy his company with woke politics and CEO malpractice. Yeah, Bob Iger will not shut up about Ron DeSantis. He is really just talking about it constantly. Um, I will remind you though, that before Super Mario Brothers did well and thus became by definition an anti-woke movie, there were those on the right trying to get people to boycott it because it was woke. We covered it at the time. Anna Perez, the conservative host of the Wrong Think podcast, accused the film of brainwashing young females, quote, to be feminist due to Princess Peach being portrayed as a strong protagonist, not afraid to take the lead. She said, what they're doing is they're trying to brainwash society into thinking that's how young girls are supposed to be. And this is dangerous because then we have women who go out there and think they're men and they wind up getting hurt. They wind up getting raped. The reality is this has actual ramifications on society. Young women see stuff like this and this brainwashes them to be a feminist. And I love that then, I love that now. So normally they have to have like, you know, a, a half second long same sex kiss to freak out about what's going on. In this case, she is losing her mind over the fact that Princess Peach is strong. She's an active participant in the movie. That's all it takes now for Mario Brothers to be woke, at least temporarily. Until it does well, and once it doesn't go broke, then it can't, I guess, have been woke. Brett, what do you think? So many of the arguments they have about wokeness are arbitrary and the question is begged. So they presume, like it is, it is a problem. It's like a, it's a complaint in search of something to, you know, inspire it. Um, they always want to call everything woke. And so they go on these crazy, like pretty much witch hunts for the, the wokest thing in there. Listen, I, I'm i for re, like things reading true in movies and that being the test. So the difference between, in my opinion, Miss Marvel and Never Have I Ever. Like Never Have I Ever is a, is a you know shows a South Asian household that seems more realistic and nice and isn't just doing it to like force representation in your face and I think Ms Marvel just too frequently forces that representation in your face it doesn't ring true as well and so that should be the test but trying to make representation ring true should be lauded completely you should be okay to do it but the right wing just wants to be mad about this and they just create all these problems frequently out of whole cloth and it it's it's really yeah. really stupid i will say i, I love miss marvel so i couldn't disagree with you more there but um but we will leave that for now i will also remind you that the little mermaid made 250 million dollars domestically already 200 million internationally it's closing in on a half billion dollars so what happened? I thought Bob Iger was focused on Ron DeSantis or whatever. Or is it that this is not actually some big ideological thing? It's just that some movies do well and others don't. Anyway, that's all the time that we have for the first hour of the show. Thank you, everyone. We'll be back in the aftermath with more though, so don't go anywhere.
Thanks for listening to the full episode of The Damage Report. Support our work, listen ad-free, access members-only bonus content, and more by subscribing to Apple Podcasts at apple.co slash TYT. I'm your host, John Adarola. I'll see you soon.